Okay, let's look at some more examples of the singular value decomposition. First off, let me point out that the SageMath cloud is no longer going to do this PyLab inline uh, behind the scenes, so we'll always have to do this first. So let's do that. Uh, also, uh, we need to import division from the future and just make the print look better. point out real quickly that most textbooks write the SVD using a V and a U star and either a sigma uh, for singular values or D for diagonal. Uh, the star is the complex transpose uh, and also the H, the Hermitian transpose, is the complex transpose. So you'll see some variation there of in the, some of the things you'll be looking at. But one thing you might be wondering is why do we call this the singular? value decomposition. Well, in order to see that, let's create a random matrix and I'll scroll up here a little bit. In this random matrix, let's make uh, two of the rows uh, linearly independent on another two of the rows. So let's do that equals a of 1 plus A of 2. The nice thing about a random matrix is almost certainly uh, the rows of a random matrix are linearly independent. So this means I have almost certainly four linearly independent rows. This is going to clearly create two rows, the first and the last, that are linearly independent or linearly dependent upon the two in the middle. So let's execute that and you'll see what I'm saying. So notice that the middle two rows are independent of each other, but the first row and the last row actually are dependent. So I've got two linearly independent rows. So I've got a rank two matrix. Now let's see what happens if we do the singular value decomposition. As you can see, there are two zero singular values. Now, if we did the singular value of just the random matrix itself, we would actually get four non-zero singular values because almost certainly the four rows are linearly independent. So we can actually see that if I insert a line here. Let's suppose we did the singular value decomposition up here. So I execute and I create A as a random matrix. And so now A is equal to this matrix. Now when I do the singular value decomposition, you see that the sigma, four non-zero singular values. Whereas when I create two linearly dependent uh, rows, then I get only two non-zero singular values and two that are. So in some sense, uh, the number of zero, i.e. vanishing, singular values is equal to the dimension of the kernel of A. In other words, the singular value decomposition, the singular values, actually measure just how singular the matrix A is. Now, what's nice about this is let's suppose that we go ahead and re-execute where we have now A is, again, the two center rows are independent, but the first and last rows are dependent on the interior two. The last one's identical to the uh, that one there. So let's suppose that we did something. Let's suppose, first off, let's make 
a V into a matrix and let's make U star also into a matrix so now notice we have these matrices here and let's simply take the first two rows of U star let me scroll back up here so what I've done is I've taken the first two rows of U star and now let's take a look at V and let's take the first two columns of V so notice these two columns of V now finally let's suppose that we look at the diagonal of Sigma of 2 so this is a diagonal matrix It's only the first two non-zero singular values. So I've kept the first two non-singular values, the first two rows of U star, and the first two columns of V. Now that's all the information I need in order to reproduce the matrix A. So let me show you the matrix A here, remind you what it is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the first two columns that you see here and I'm going to multiply and I want to continue so this uh, backslash character at the end of a line allows a Python command to be continued so I'm going to do the first two columns of V times and you'll notice that that is my two singular values but I'm not keeping the c zero parts of the singular values just the first two singular values now let's go up there and grab those two rows from U star and let's put that in there and let's execute and very very close a little bit of round off error because uh, we're only keeping four decimal places